Homebrew coming at you today with packing tips. That's right, how to pack beer, send it to friends, to do beer trades, and for many of us, there's the SJ Pour Challenge coming up. So I'm here to give you some good tips on making sure that you don't lose any bottles that you send out to other people. I personally have had one bottle break in all the trades that I've ever done, and that was when I used a box that an individual asked me to use. I didn't think it was a good box, they wanted it back, they lost a bottle. The only other way I've lost a bottle was due to temperature and that's one more thing that we'll cover. The first thing that I want to cover today is materials. You want to assemble the materials, see what you have to work with and materials are very important. First let's talk about what not to use. The one thing you don't want to use in packing materials is paper. Paper is our enemy. I know a lot of people think that crumpling up newspaper is a great way to insulate a package and keep things nice and tight. But I'm here to tell you that when things travel, it gets crushed down. It gets flattened as the box gets bounced around. And when you put a beer bottle in, and it's next to other bottles, there's, see, there's always spots where there's no longer any good insulation. Newspaper is never a good option. Some people are aware that they do get this harder cardboard type packing paper. Well, this is good with light objects that are in another box already and well packed. It's not good for bottles. So if it's paper, just toss it out, recycle it, not for shipping beer. Another thing that I've seen used is cotton or polyester that's commonly used in quilting materials. Much like the newspaper, those cottons and things will crush down. They will compact and uh, you're going to end up with broken bottles. So don't use that either. Oddly enough, one thing that I have seen that's worked well are super, super thick socks. They can slide right over the top of the beer. They do a pretty good job. It's not my uh, suggestion, but they work well. The best thing for packing is bubble wrap. And what I mean by bubble wrap, there's all kinds of form. These are some pretty large bubbles. This is a common style of medium-sized bubbles. But bubble wrap comes in all forms. Like, look at these interesting squares. Not good for around a bottle, but great for on the edges of your package. There's also the really fine bubbles. These aren't particularly good for the sides of the package, but they're great for wrapping beers. Talking about bubbles, you have the various forms of air bags. These can be used, but you have to use very specific packing in order to use them. The problem with these is they can shift around during shipping with the weight of the bottle and end up at these thin spots most commonly where there's no protection whatsoever. Other interesting materials that can be used are different forms of styrofoam. Just little pieces like this can be put on the back or the front side of a bottle and large thick pieces can be used as padding on the inside of the box. Like this. This is a great thing for padding the side of the box. It has give but it springs back really well. Other creative packing materials include things like this bag. Now, this bag doesn't really hold air, it's not sealed, but it's full of little styrofoam pieces inside. Kind of like peanuts, but actually more like the styrofoam that we just looked at. And finally, there's the infamous packing peanuts. They have to be used properly or they really don't help you. Boxes come in all shapes and sizes. The most important thing to look for in a box is a sturdy box. This one's somewhat flimsy, it could still be used, but there's no obvious uh, indentations from previous shipping trips. Used boxes often have indentations and weak areas that make them a hazard. Shapes are also important. I've got a rather large box here. It's very sturdy. It's a good box to use, but we might want to consider how we're going to be packing things. One common box is the trusty 22 ounce box. These can be great and used in many ways. Often hard to find are these 24 bottle 12 ounce packs. These can be fantastic. When using these, if you're sending a lot of beer though, 
You can't send it just as it is. This has to be repacked into a second box because there's no padding on the edges. And we're going to cover that topic next. But before we cover how to pack, let's talk about the potential for damage. Damage can happen. So the big problem that you have with damage is leak. When things leak, uh, you don't know what the shipper is going to do. This will sometimes fix it and send it through. Sometimes they'll send it all the way back. We want to avoid that. There are two great ways to avoid that. One is to put your bottles into individual Ziploc bags. I have many friends that do this. I don't personally care for that, but I do reuse these and send them back to people. You'll see that very easily a 12 ounce bottle will fit inside this Ziploc bag. One thing that some people do is after packing their beer, they'll then try to put this inside the Ziploc bag. This is an already pre-padded bottle. You'll see that this works pretty well with this particular one for this bottle. One thing you want to do, uh, surprisingly, is you actually want to remove the air from this. A lot of people think that they want to leave the air because it adds padding. But air inside a Ziploc bag leads to a greater chance of the bag popping and no longer having a tight seal. 22 ounce bottles can sometimes be more difficult to put in Ziploc bags. You can see that I can put this without any bubble wrap on it straight into this Ziploc bag. I can remove the air and finish zipping it up. Personally, I recommend doing this technique whether you're doing a 12 or 22 ounce bottle. Put inside the Ziploc bag first, then wrap the Ziploc bag inside your bubble wrap. My preferred technique is to use a larger bag, a large plastic bag, to handle all of the beers. When using older bags, I suggest that you inspect them. Make sure there are no tears. This has a tear. I can't use this. If something breaks, it could leak. Personally, I like these. This is the Glad Force Flex. The advantage with this type of bag is that they stretch. They have a lot of give to them. And that really allows you to pack well and have a greater assurance that the bag's not going to break in shipping. Regardless, you should be able to get bags fairly inexpensively when, with trash bags. You can go to places like the dollar store or something comparable and get some bags. Uh, but most stores will have uh, inexpensive bags that you can use. If you opt for using a box such as this, this is a 22 ounce 12 pack. It's a great option for 12 ounce bottles. Probably not the best option for 22 ounce. But a 12 ounce bottle will fit into this quite nicely. In fact, it will leave some room on the top. I suggest that you throw something on the bottom to give it a little extra padding, put this on, and then put some little padding on the top. However, when using this, this needs to be double boxed. So this box needs to go inside of another box. If you use this technique, consider placing the entire box inside a good trash liner. Then place this box into a second box with additional padding on the outside of that. Removing the inside of this box, this is a great box for shipping out beers. You want to look at spacing. This box has some pretty good space available. If you take a look, there's a lot of room on either side inside this box. That means that we can put a plastic liner in here, put some padding in, and still slide this in. I suggest a couple options. One is to take a padding like this, cut it to size, this is foam, and put it on every side of the box. One of my rules is pad the sides of the box like your Aunt Mildred's behind. We all have one of those ants. Another option is to use bubble wrap. This is a nice tight bubble wrap. And when I put this inside the box, I need it for all sides. It gives me a nice padding on the sides, each side, the bottom. I can put some more on the back. Look for nice tight bubbles. That's a great way to go. This style of bubble wrap is also very good. But take a look. Make sure that a lot of the sides haven't been popped. It's very common to see this type of uh, bubble wrap have a lot of the areas pop and you no longer have sufficient padding. But you could double it up. Even some used, as long as there's a, a good amount of uh, bubbles that are still solid, 
can be doubled up and used as a great sighting inside this box. It's also a good option to use a combination. I sometimes will use a padding on one edge and use the bubble wrap on the other. No matter what materials you use to pad the size of the box, make sure that they're in good shape still. Make sure that there's some give and yet they'll resume their form. Again, pad it like your Aunt Mildred's butt. If you opt to use the plastic bag, like I do, for the entire package, put your outside packaging in place. Then, put in your plastic bag next. The bag's not on the outside, not likely to get damaged. It is also protected somewhat by the padding on the sides. Now we can start placing beers inside. Now I'm going to show you how to bubble wrap a beer. One of my rules is don't under tape, don't over tape. One method I commonly see is electrical tape. Electrical tape is taken and uh, they'll put one over the top this way and then they'll do wraps around the side this way to hold the cap on. I personally don't use this method. I have no problem if you choose to do it. Keep one thing in mind. If you choose to put electrical tape on your cap, suggest to your friends that they take a knife and cut around the edges and then pull the top off. When you take off electrical tape, there have been times where it has pulled the cap loose and now I've got an open bottle. One of the reasons I'm not a fan. Also, if you properly pack the box, good padding and the rest that we'll show you later, this is generally not an issue. As I said earlier, you can use a sock to pack a bottle. They slide in fairly easily. One thing to consider though is that the top often has more padding than the bottom. My suggestion is that if you do choose this method, double it over. The end result will look something like this, but you can see the cap is not well protected. I'd consider pulling the end up over and maybe using a rubber band or something to hold that in place. When packing 12 ounce bottles, you can usually use a single 12 ounce length for a single bottle. I would use two sections for a 22 ounce bottle. But as I said before, my favorite is the small bubbles. They're nice, tight, and compact. It's well protected all over. So I'm going to just tear this so that I have a two foot section. Put the bubble side in against the bottle. Simply place it in the center. You want to have a little bit to cover the bottom as well as the top of the bottle. Roll it tightly and square as possible. Here's where we come back to my rule of don't under tape, don't over tape. My personal opinion is this is over taping. Taking good packing tape and taping this material I think is overkill. Don't under tape. I've seen people that don't even tape this around. They figure that just putting it inside is good enough. Unfortunately with the shifting and things that can happen, this can often come undone resulting in a damaged bottle. I'm also a big fan of being able to recycle the things that I get from other people. When I use this packing tape, it grips tight and it tears and I can't reuse this. So I use, very simply, scotch tape. I'll put one in the lower section, right about here. I'll come up and put another one towards the top of the thick portion of the bottle. It's just enough to hold it so that it won't come undone. And it's easily removed so that it can be used again. On the bottom of the bottle, I fold in two sides and then fold the top and bottom together. Hold it in place. Get a nice length of scotch tape. Just put it right across. It's going to hold. It's enough. The top's different. The top has a lot of bagginess to it, which is great because we want that padding around the top. Again, you may or may not have used electrical tape. Since I don't, I want this nice and tight. I'll either put a piece of tape around it, or in some cases, I'll simply get a rubber band, which I always have handy. Just put a couple wraps and get it to hold in place. I always have additional padding up here 
So it really doesn't concern me. But I have padding on the bottom, which is the strongest part, and the weakest part is the neck. But because there's so much extra, it does get some extra padding. My next big rule is to pack it tighter than your Uncle Wally's wallet. Right. Earlier, I had a box that was partially prepared. I used some really firm bubble wrap on the sides. I'm going to take the styrofoam, cut it down the middle, and use it for the edges. I'll place one of these at the bottom and the other at the top. And then I'll put my bubble wrap back in place. The bottom and sides are now well padded. This combined with the padding around my bottles should put me in good shape. I still need to add, though, my plastic bag. Now that I have my plastic bag and padding in place, I can start packing. You really want to sum up how bottles will best fit inside. Bottles can be packed in odd lots and even lots. I'm going to show you a couple configurations of how you can place your bottles inside of a box. To make it easier though, I'm going to do it while it's not in the box. You have configurations of two. Pretty simple. Two go side by side. This is pretty easy. The one thing you want to do is make sure that these are not knocking against each other. The bottles inside your box are your greatest enemy. I suggest a couple ways that you can resolve this. One is, put some rubber bands that are tight. But rubber bands do have give. They don't always work well. One additional way is to place the bottles side by side in some bubble wrap. Wrap them one more time and tape it up. They're not going anyplace. The other is if it's just packed really tight in the box, so tight that they're not going to move, that works as well. In some boxes where you're going to do more than two, you have configurations of three. If the box can only hold two bottles wide, I suggest taking the third bottle and placing it right in between. Then going ahead and securing these three together so that they're not going to move. Again, don't use the packing tape. You will render this unusable for the next person to receive it. Another common configuration that I see is sending four bottles. I consider putting bottles just like this as a four pack and again wrapping them tight. Perhaps using something like masking tape that probably won't damage this when removed. Another common configuration is when you have five. When I use five, I will take it, have the three, and then place the other two right in between. See how nicely they pack like this? Secure these inside the box and they'll do well. But we also have to consider the size of the box. In a longer box configured like this, I would pack things differently. I haven't padded this box, but I'm using it as an example. You can see that I can put three bottles very comfortably in here, but what I want to do actually in this case is take other ones and bring them this direction with the next together. Consider though this is going to be raised up. You will want to put some additional padding underneath in this configuration to help hold it at that angle. Today I'm sending four beers to a homebrew Wednesday friend. Four bottles in a fairly narrow box. When I put this in this particular box, I notice that I have a bit of play between the bottles. I'm going to opt to use more bubble wrap. I always save my bubble wrap. I have purchased bubble wrap. If you need to purchase bubble wrap, rather than going to the local uh, office depot or, or supply store of that nature, I highly recommend looking for an industrial supplier. There are a lot of industrial suppliers that will sell you bubble wrap at a much lower cost. Often though, they do sell it in large quantities, so you may have to look around. I've used enough bubble wrap in this situation to double it around this. I know I have plenty of packing material and this is going to arrive safely for sure. Again, I'm using scotch tape. It's enough to hold it in place and yet they'll be able to reuse this material again. This is of particular importance when sending in your SJ pour beers. We really don't have to purchase new materials to send your things out. We'd like to be able to repack in the same materials you sent to us. A quick test before I put the bag back in. Oh yeah, this is going to fit, but it is going to be nice and tight. 
it'll be very secure inside. This is snug. It is not moving around. I do notice, however, I have a lot of room up top. I could probably use putting some padding below again to ensure that this doesn't uh, uh, get nailed on the bottom. This is a good time to consider using larger bubbles or some other type of padding. It really doesn't matter. This is going to fit very nicely, but I know it can shift around. I suggest putting cardboard or something else that will hold it in place on top. The same is true for peanuts. I can safely put peanuts in the bottom of this. And because I'm going to have a plastic bag going, that'll go on top. That will hold the peanuts in place. I know that they're not going to shift on me. Okay, I put the extra padding on the bottom, and I've placed my package on top. It's nice and tight. I do notice there is a little bit of play on the front and the back side of this, though. This can shift a little bit in packaging. In this situation, I want to pull this so that the end of the bottle that's most solid, the base, is against the current side. I want to add the additional padding to the side where the caps are. Nearly any kind of packing material can be used to fill the extra space. However, again, you don't want to use any form of paper because it will condense and you'll not be protected. To demonstrate this, I'm going to use this interesting bag with pillows, so to speak. They're little foam pieces. The plastic bag will hold them in place so that the foam pieces can't shift out to the sides. They'll stay where I want them to be. Notice that this is now very secure. No bottles are moving whatsoever. Again, pack it as tight as your Uncle Wally's wallet. Now that I have it nice and secure, I can go to my next step. I'm simply going to pull my zip ties and seal this bag up in place. I'll put a light tie on it, but not too much. I want the guy on the other end to be able to open it up. Now I just need to find something to fill the space on top. This is a great time to consider using some of my airbags. One of the reasons I'm using so many materials is because I want you to see the vast number of materials that are available to you and still pack things very well. I have two bubble packs that will take it right to the top, but I still have an alley here that needs to be filled. Digging through my pile, I found a few more airbags that will do a great job. When you close the top, you want to feel that it's pretty tight, that there's not going to be any give. I feel like there's a slight bit of movement still in mine. I'm going to throw another set of airbags inside. As I said, I keep all the materials that come to me. Wow, that's tight. Finally, I get to use my packing tape. I always want to remember which side is up. But I want to check the bottom too. You can see this particular box is glued. That's not going to cut it for shipping. There are just a couple more topics to cover. The first one is, you can't fight Mother Nature. We find that's true in all of life. So, be careful to check the weather conditions between you and where the package is headed. Hot weather as well as extremely cold weather are your enemy. Temperatures dropping down to 30 or 32 degrees probably won't be too much of an issue. However, if it's dropping lower than that, wait and ship something later. But hot weather is an issue too. You really don't want to ship things when you're in the upper 90s and 100s. That's for certain. Boxes can sit on doorsteps and cook all day long while they're waiting for someone to receive them. If you do need to ship something during hot weather, I suggest going to, again, a dollar store, big lots, someplace cheap, or a drug store and buying a really inexpensive ice chest, one that will fit snugly inside of a box. But you also then need to pack in uh, some inexpensive little freezer bags as well to keep the contents cool on the inside. I also don't recommend using the U.S. Postal Service. I've watched U.S. Postal workers take my box and drop it. I'm serious. I've watched them do it. I only use the U.S. Postal Service for light things that can't get damaged. For example, this box just arrived today from the U.S. Postal Service. There's a motherboard in this. Look how well cared for this box was. They have strict regulations about shipping liquids. You'll find that FedEx and UPS are a little bit more liberal. 
there's a cheaper way to use UPS. You can save money by going to UPS online. Set up a My UPS account. They actually offer lower rates than you'll get at the UPS stores. You can save a bundle of money. Print out the packing slip. Just tape it right on the top or the side and you're ready to go. You can drop it off at any UPS drop-off site or UPS store. I highly recommend using labels such as fragile glass. I put this on the sides and the top of the box. I also recommend a this side up label. You can print this on simple paper, cut them and tape them onto the box. This is particularly important if you're packing in a 12 ounce bottle box have all the bottles standing upright. You really want the base to be down just like the pros do when they're shipping it to stores. So make sure you use this side up. Now I know that carriers don't always pay attention to that. One important thing to consider when doing that is if you're going to use this side up I highly recommend putting your shipping label on the side as opposed to the top because car carriers will lay it on their side so they can quickly see the label so that they can deliver it. But if you have it positioned so that it's narrowest and deepest and on this side, then more than likely they'll pack it on the truck in that same manner. I do want this side to be up because I have a large amount of padding on the bottom and the top and although good padding on the sides, it is less. Okay, I've got my labels on all my sides, fragile on the top, says this side up, and I have my label on the side. This package is ready to go. It's solid. You can't tell there's liquid in there. And the label is clearly labeled yeast samples. I also sometimes use antique glass. Well, this package is ready to go. It's secure. It's tight. Nothing's going to happen to this. It won't be returned. I know my friends are going to receive this in good condition. Keep in mind my simple rules. Materials. Don't use paper. Paper will flatten. Items will get damaged. Much better to use any type of foam or bubble wrap. When using large bubble wrap or peanuts, create a barrier to hold them in place, such as cardboard, so that they won't shift around. Pad the sides as well padded as your Aunt Mildred's backside. This is really important. You want room for give so that if they bump the box, drop it, your bottles are not going to be damaged. Put a liner on the inside of the box or wrap each bottle in an individual bag. Wrap the bottles first before putting anything on the outside such as a heavy duty sock or bubble wrap. Don't under tape or over tape. It's okay to go ahead and use electrical tape on the cap. Just remember if you receive that, cut the electrical tape and then remove the cap. Don't try to undo the electrical tape. You might damage the bottle. When putting bubble wrap around bottles, be sure to use scotch tape, not heavy duty tape. This will allow people to reuse the materials, such as people sending me bottles for the SJ Poor experiment. Remember my rule is to pack things tight, tight, tight. This is going to ensure that they won't bounce around and hit each other and cause any damage. Once placed inside the box and with your lining in place, if you're using an outside lining, check for space. Is there room for it to move? If so, Make sure to put something in between to ensure that you fill that space and it's extremely tight in the box. Tighten the box with padding on the outside is key. Properly label your box. Let them know there's something fragile inside. Don't use the U.S. Postal Service. Use FedEx or UPS. To save money on UPS, make a My UPS account. Print up your labels online. You'll save more money than you can imagine. Shipping doesn't have to be daunting. It doesn't have to be difficult. Ask friends to save packing materials. We all have someone that works in some kind of a building or office or some kind of a supply place that gets lots of packing materials. Save the materials you get and if nothing else you can go buy bubble wrap at an office supply store nearby. And finally label the contents as either yeast samples or antique glass. It's worked for me well within the United States and shipping abroad. When shipping large quantities, see if it's possible to place it in a box that will have dividers such as a 22 ounce box upright. It's a great way to ship. But when shipping things in an upright position, always make sure that you line that with a second box. 
that's absolutely necessary because you won't have the padding on the sides to ensure that it's going to rise safely. And finally, when packing a beer, you need to reward yourself for a job well done. In my case, I'm drinking a Riot IPA, a great homebrew, but any great commercial beer will do. Share beers with friends, trade beers, have other people try your beer and experience what you've made and enjoy some of theirs as well. So from Clement's Homebrew, cheers. I'm not going to take this to UPS right now. I'm going to enjoy a good beer. Catch you later.